All right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to create modern websites using uh, HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript sometimes. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to <coughs> order elements in CSS Grid. So uh, the beauty of Flexbox and CSS Grid is that we are able to <coughs> preserve our HTML structure. Um, while visually reorienting the user or changing uh, what the user sees or the ordering of elements on the page. Um, <clears throat> that way we're able to keep a really solid HTML structure but we're still able to maneuver the page visually like we want it to be uh, especially at different breakpoints. So I'm going to show you how to do that uh, in this video. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to have two different elements and so what I want is uh, I want one element to have an image with some text to the side and then I want the other one uh, down below to be alternating text and image so the images will be diagonal and the text will be diagonal to one another not uh, image image text text and I want that to happen you know as we move out but when it's <clears throat> when the elements are on a mobile device I want there to be an image and text image and text. So I want them to look exactly the same on mobile uh, but I don't want them to look the same uh, once we get out to about 900 pixels or so um, and anything larger than that. Uh, this can actually be done with the same markup and <clears throat> only a few uh, changes to the CSS using CSS grid. So let's get into it. I'm gonna have something called a group. This is just a wrapper uh, wrapping all of our elements together and just basically we're gonna have an image and we're gonna have text and for images I've, I've taken to using source.unsplash.com many people know about unsplash but they also have this uh, like low-level API that you can just kinda plug and play uh, if you put this into your website it will go out and get a random image uh, for you and so all you have to do is copy that they also have a lot of different, uh, I guess, options that you can choose from different places, different collections. Uh, this one is really nice because you can just put a, um, you can just put a keyword in there, which is what I'm going to do. <coughs> and this keyword is going to help to separate out. Oh, it'll help to separate out our, uh, our two. Uh, sections I guess is what they are. Uh, so let's just put this in here and we'll do one nature and one water. Um, I don't really want it to be that large. Let's do like 800 by 600 something like that. <clears throat> okay and uh, for my text I've put together a, something on GitHub called Meaningful Ipsum. So it's just first chapters from stories uh, that you recognize these different stories here. So when you get here, um, <clears throat> you're faced with this. You just choose a story. So let's just pick Alice in Wonderland. And you can literally just copy and paste. It's the whole first chapter. So instead of using uh, lorem ipsum for your projects, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, you can use actual meaningful text that you can just copy and paste. <clears throat> so you can see it shows up here. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just getting over um, allergies and getting a little bit sick. So what I want to do is I want to copy that and just paste it down below. And instead of nature, we'll do water. So now we have uh, one nature photo, one water photo. And that'll help us to distinguish between our two uh, groups. So this is all the HTML that we really need. And you can see that when we're at a small size, um, the image is going to be over top of the uh, text. Now we need to make sure that our images are responsive. The way we do that is we say image width is 100% and I'm just going to go ahead and put a display block on there too which just pulls it up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, and then we need to start working on our group. So for the group what we want to do is first put a margin maybe two, uh, two rim on the top and bottom just to separate them a little bit. Or I guess we could just put that on the bottom. <clears throat> so 
So if you don't know, this is a shorthand for top, left and right, and then bottom. So um, you could also do just two of them. So top and bottom, left and right, and then you get rid of this. Or you can write out all four, top, right, left, uh, bottom, and left. So it goes like a clock uh, when you do these values. <clears throat> so that looks fine uh, to me. And like I said, when we get out here, what I want is about 900 pixels. So about right there. Uh, I want to have an image on the left and text on the right. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to say app media and the minimum width is 900 pixels. So the group, what we want to do is display grid. And then uh, grid template columns is going to be repeat two and then one fr so this means uh, each um, each group is going to take a, or each um, image and text so these are our uh, grid items the image and the text uh, containers so each container is going to take up 50 percent of the space so we have uh, it's dividing the available space by two and then each of those uh, containers is going to take up 50% uh, essentially as much space as half of the remaining space is whatever that is. Uh, you can also write this um, this way. You could say 1FR, 1FR, but the repeat uh, notation, especially if you have something like um, four or six or twelve uh, items you don't want to have to just sit there and do twelve things across so the repeat uh, function is actually really nice to have uh, not as necessary when it's only uh, a two up situation like this okay that looks pretty good what I want is for this to be centered uh, I could do that using grid I can use it uh, flexbox I'm just going to use flexbox so I say text <clears throat> really I just want this to happen also at 900 pixels so we say the text container is going to be display flex and then we'll justify the content to the center which should center uh, left and right and then we align the items to the center and that should align it uh, vertically and let's put some padding on here so it's a padding like 3 RAM or something like that just to kinda give it a little bit of white space so now we have uh, exactly what I wanted which is an image here and an image here and then we have our text out to the right uh, this is a pattern that you see for um, landing pages or feature pages sometimes uh, where it's got a nice headline and then a little text underneath and maybe a call to action to learn more or something like that. So instead of just doing three um, feature boxes in a row, you know, this is a way to provide a really nice image or maybe a slideshow or something like that. So, <clears throat> but what I want is I want these to alternate. So I don't, I want the image here just like this and text here. And then the next one down. I want to have the text here and I want to have the image here but what, what I really like is that when I come to a mobile view it's exactly what I want it to be which is image text image text so that's just uh, it's just reading our HTML at that point we're not doing anything special to it and I want this to be a pattern throughout my HTML to be able to have this uh, you could flip it certainly uh, and it could be even more meaningful in your HTML to have the text first and then it introduces the image uh, however you want to do it is fine uh, but just know that we're we're planning to reorder <coughs> our screen uh, based on this 900 pixels size alright let's see maybe I want a little bit of padding just on the fullness yeah there we go so a little bit of white space just for each section um, for each group 
Okay, and now let's uh, do the magic. So at 900 pixels, we want the image uh, to be ordered a certain way, and we want the text to be ordered a certain way. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put group reverse. You could be, you could say inverse, reverse, um, inverted. You know, just something to recognize that something is going to happen with these elements. Um, so I come down and at media and min width of 900 pixels. We want to say group inverse, and I want the let's do the image first. I want the image to be ordered as number uh, is order number two, and what I want the text to be is order one. And let's see if that works. Oh, group reverse, not inverse. All right. <clears throat> so you have to use the right class names with the right class names, right? Um, so our image, when we get to 900 pixels, our image is going to be the second thing. And our text is going to be order number one. Right now, uh, so when we're here, the image is ordered as number one because it comes first. It's the first child of the grid. And then our text is ordered at number two. So those are the defaults. So these are just kind of labeled like an index. So one, two, three, however many elements you have, they're ordered according to how they are in the HTML. But you can actually, <coughs> you can reorder them visually. So this is only a visual reordering. We are not changing anything in the HTML. The HTML is staying the same, but we are visually reordering them on the page. And so that if you came in and uh, you had another group uh, like this and you come in and you have a group that does not have any sort of uh, group reverse on it, then you're going to get that alternating effect, right? So, <clears throat> and then if we have another group, then all we would need to do is add our group reverse because you see it's not adding anything. Uh, it's not reversing our images. So let's say <coughs> horses for this one. And all we need to do is once we have our group reverse set up, we just come in and we add that group reverse and it alternates our images. So now you have a nice little uh, featured section um, with padding and then all of our um, HTML is the same. So I use Pug, so this would actually help me if I wanted to uh, use some sort of mix in in order to create all these elements. Um, it would save me a little bit of time and effort and space and make it easier to maintain but visually I still get uh, I get this alternating pattern over here so that's how you can reorder elements using CSS grid uh, in Flexbox um, it works exactly the same way so any children if this were a flex container uh, any children of the flex container have an order so order number one order number two uh, and you can reverse or change those orders based on breakpoints in the CSS so that is uh, hopefully something that helps you along the way uh, realizing that you don't have to go through and and change your HTML all the time when you're using CSS grid or CSS Flexbox um, they give you a lot of power to move things around the page and to take up different amounts of space uh, based on breakpoints um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, if you like this video, please click the like button, and uh, I'd be honored if you shared it. Um, I think this is uh, really cool information and cool stuff that we haven't had access to uh, for a long time in web design. But CSS Grid is very powerful. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do. I have lots of videos for... Uh, beginners and intermediate uh, web developers. Um, 
All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.